ko koni li toku ingoa. Um, I work at Foundation North as a engagement advisor, and I've been there for about five years. And I think a lot of you may know Foundation North, but we've had a few changes in the last 18 months, especially with our strategy. So I thought I might reintroduce ourselves. So who are we? Um, Foundation North, we actually used to be known as the ASB Community um, Trust, established in 1988 um, when ASB actually sold to the Commonwealth. So the sales of the community shares formed the ASB Community Trust. In 2015, we rebranded to what we know now are known as Foundation North. Uh, we are a, um, we're not a government funder, um, but our trustees are appointed by the Ministry of Finance. Currently, our PITIA is about 1.5 billion and our annual grant budget is about 40 to 45 million. Um, and we're in a COVID situation, so I thought I might mention that um, our diverse investment portfolio has meant that um, whilst we are in this situation, we are still continue to fund grant initiatives um, to the community. And last year, I think roughly we gave or we granted a little bit less than 900 grants in 2020. 20. Our vision is simple, it's to enhance lives. Um, it's in, to enhance life to our community, our regions are Northland and all the way bottom to the southern part of the, um, the Port of Waikato. And how we, ach how we achieve our um, vision is we fund. So we do have four main funding um, focus areas, which are increase equity, social inclusion, regenerative environment, and community support. Um, the terms here sound really broad, but actually what we wanted to fund and the outcomes that we're wanting to see is quite specific. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but I will um, encourage you guys to go onto our website and actually understand them. Um, and we're targeted for a reason, we're not. Um, we're targeted for a reason because our research does inform our focus series and we wanna ensure that uh, we are funding initiatives that make that impact to the communities. We, across all the focus areas, the common themes are that we have our priority communities, which is our Māori and Pacific communities, and South Auckland and Northland are our priority regions. What we do like to see across our um, initiatives is that they all demonstrate that they're community led. So they're led by people of lived experience they are initiatives that are highly collaborative, um, doing with community and not to community. We have two main grants. So the quick response, um, it is a small grant. It is up to 25,000 with no closing dates. The decision is shorter. So it's about eight, um, about eight weeks before you get a decision from a complete application. And then our other one is our community grant. So it is our bigger grant. It's about, you know, if you apply more than 25,000, it's the same thing. There's no closing dates. Um, with the community grant, we do, our trustees do meet six times a year. So the average wait time is about five months of receiving a complete application. However, um, we are in the process of streamlining that, um, the process. So if you are applying for under 100K, which technically is 99,999, you may get a decision a little bit um, faster than the five months turnaround time. The key difference in terms of the two grants is in the, in the community grant, we are funding multi-year applications. So it's more of a long-term view to help your organization sustain or scale up um, your initiatives. Um, I just wanted to kind of highlight the word complete application here. I think um, this is the key word because if your application is unfortunately missing information or missing documents, it's not deemed as complete and we will be sending it back to you um, to rework a little bit before um, and resubmitting it for us to deem it complete and then it moves on to the next stage. So the, I guess the first tip to grant making is to make sure you're eligible. Um, so each funder is different like Bronwyn said, for Foundation North, we don't fund individuals. Um, so you must be an organization to apply and you must demonstrate straight charitable purpose. So you could be a charitable trust, you could be an incorporated society, um, you could be a branch of an organization, um, you could be a company that demonstrates you've got charitable intent 
or you could be a small group of people who are starting up that may not have um, the legal entity yet and you know that there is a group that can act as your fiscal sponsor or your umbrella, um, we will also accept applications from you. There are, two things, there are two other things that you must provide or show is you must be able to provide annual accounts and your program, your project, your service um, must show that it will benefit the communities of Auckland and or, nor and or Northland. So the second part of eligibility oh, is um, to make sure that your project is eligible or what you're wanting to seek is eligible. Foundation North, we do have a list of um, exclusions and limitations. And I will say it looks really small here, um, but it used to be four pages. So we've actually um, shrunken a lot and we've actually um, taken a lot of exclusions out. And actually we're funding a lot more different things now, but it's always worth um, when you're in the planning stage and you're thinking about what you would like funding for, to double check with us that we that we will fund it. Um, because I can say that if it's on the list, um, it's, a, it's a quick, sorry, you're not um, eligible from our side. Um, and you've spent so much time just putting the application in. So highly recommend to double check this list. So what makes a great funding application? I would say um, everything that Bronwyn has said is also applicable to us. Um, as funders, we are quite similar in what we look for. So being concise and using simple language is, is quite important. Um, our assessors have, you know, they get a lot of applications in, and you want to make sure that what you are trying to articulate to us is nice and clear. Um, you want to be sure about the impact you're making, the outcome that you guys are trying to achieve. So I would say like the first two sentences of when you're answering a question, that should be able to capture the, um, the reader's attention. So we would be like, right, we know what you guys are saying, and then you can elaborate. Um, a good example is a question that is commonly asked is, what would you like funding for? Um, we get a range of, we would like funding for XYZ program. And that's all. And then that leaves us thinking, okay, great, but now, now where do we need we need to seek this information? Or we get people launching in and telling us their amazing program, but not actually answering what they would like funding for. So if you want funding for um, coordinator salary, volunteer costs, we need to know that upfront before you tell us about your um, your program or your project a little bit more. And I totally agree with Bronwyn when she mentioned that get someone else in the organization or get a friend who doesn't know um, the organization well, get them to have a read of your application. After reading it, they should actually be able to clearly articulate um, who you guys are, what you guys want funding for, what are the impacts you guys are trying to make. If they can get that right or they can articulate that clearly back to you, I think you've done a really good job um, because that's what we look for as well, that simple language that, that it's nice and clear. The other thing is that most application forms are designed quite similar. We ask for who's benefiting, um, when, you know, when is the event or initiative, what do you guys want funding for, why do you want the funding, or um, why is there a community need, and, um, and how do you know? So with these questions, they are designed to ensure that we are trying to capture your full story of your organization or your initiative. That's when you use that opportunity to really um, go into detail about um, that community need, that, that, that why, um, and also how. I, a lot of times we get applications where the group has, um, the first question is, uh, what do you want funding for? And they, they actually answer everything in there and then when it comes to those questions, it's almost like, please see above. And we're like, oh, you know, we thought this would be a great opportunity for you guys to tell us more. So in our system, what we do has, is we have little helper text and I will encourage you guys to use it just to kind of guide you guys in what we look for in each application or in each question, sorry. Um, and in each question, we do have a word limit, which will help you um, keep yourselves concise. So hopefully they will help. And I think 
exactly what Bronwyn and Kate, know your funders, um, know what they fund, that's really important. Um, I have highlighted here, read and understand Foundation North's focus areas and community impact. This is um, really important because I think if there's not a natural alignment between what you want funding for and what Foundation North um, funds, then perhaps Foundation North may not be the best funder for you, no matter um, how hard you guys try to squeeze it in or align it. Um, you see, we see applications or groups, unfortunately, mission drift. So they're always chasing the money, but they're losing the organization's vision of what they're really wanting to achieve. Um, so I would say if these, have a look at other funders to see if there's a closer fit if Foundation North um, isn't the right fit for you. And please take your time to understand what each funder needs in terms of supporting documents um, and information. We do have um, a set number of documents, which isn't very much that we need as part of application. Each application or each document does have its own criteria. So for example, a community support letter um, that is dated and signed um, by the person. We get, it, we get a lot of support letters that, that are not signed or not dated. So when you do get those documents in, please just make sure they kind of um, tick the boxes that we need. And take the opportunity to think about who you're getting the support letters from. Do they really um, demonstrate that they're going to support the mahi that you guys are doing, specifically the organization or the initiative? Um, we also get another example is the budget. So um, a lot of, we do get applications that um, send us a budget, but they're not coherent with the application. So the application may say they're applying for 50,000. The budget shows 100,000. So if they don't match that, it doesn't really help our process in saying, actually, what do you want to achieve? Who are you guys, um, what do you guys uh, want funding for? Because the contradicting information, which makes it really hard for us. So ensure that the, all, every document you have actually matches what you're wanting in your application. And that goes the same with, the, with your initiative. Um, if it doesn't match your um, constitution or your organization's aim, we would also be um, probably having that conversation with you. Hey, you know, how does this help achieve your organization's vision? Because ultimately that's what the organization is set up to do. Oh, I will say in the supporting document, um, there is room for you guys to add other documents that you would like. It is a fine balance of please don't um, attach every photo to show your awesome mahi but please attach information that perhaps we can't find on your website, we can't find on your social media. So these may be um, an evaluation. It might be the annual report that would demonstrate um, all the great things and tell your story in your own words um, that you've done in the previous year. And, and also be realistic. So this is in terms of how much you're applying for as well as the timing. Um, are you putting all your eggs into one basket with Foundation North? Um, and what is the risk of that? Because if there is, because we are highly contestable, if you can't fully fund it, does that affect the impact of your initiative? Um, and does that also demonstrate good planning from the organization? So, um, always kind of have a look about, and also with Bronwyn, what she said was correct. We actually have a look at the budget and we look at, hey, actually, um, do you guys have the capacity to, to manage a grant of that size? Um, so those are the things that we consider. And also the time, have you allowed enough time between applying for a grant and also when your initiative is? So if the initiative is um, in two weeks time and you're applying now, you basically won't get a, um, a reply and your initiative will already been done. So um, be realistic. So we see applications or we get calls from groups that have applied and let's say they have a decision date in December, but their, um, their initiative is in January and they're calling up um, quite, quite anxious, waiting for a decision. Um, and that doesn't help because like I said, it's about it's about planning. So what happens if we can't we don't fund the amount that you, you request? Um, what happens to your initiative? So I would say be realistic or actually plan, plan ahead, plan half a year, half a year to nine months ahead to ensure that you get a decision nice and early 
and you know that you know you know how much foundation north is funding and how much you need to reach out to other funders for um, and lastly we understand that um, the grant application or the language that funders use um, it may be new to a lot of people and that our team are here to support you so um, the team you can reach us either online by our websites or we only call away if you have any questions at all but we do have a range of self-help tools um, so these are the list of application guides available on our website um, that help you from a get-go from the eligibility from how to log into our funding hub or the timing or when you can apply um, a very thorough list of the documents to submit um, I particularly like how we assess because that gives you hints of what we look for in each application. Um, I will say now one of the questions that we do get, um, perhaps could be answered better, is the collaboration questions because we ask who you work with and how. Uh, a lot of groups give us a list of awesome groups that they work with, but the missing piece is the how. You know, how does a group work with you? What part do they play in terms of um, achieving what you guys are wanting to achieve? So other than, yeah, so I would encourage you to have a look at the guides um, first, um, do your research and then give us a call if you have any questions. And thank you. And that's a list, that's our website there if you guys um, wanted to access it. Mm -hmm.